Intervention. Lizzie Pree is on the case to get the bamboozled brother off the bad bandit's bandwagon. Stay tuned to see how Lizzie approaches the nefarious Howlrunners. I mean, I'd be happy to talk to your brother, but I don't know that I have the the skills or the inclination to, you know, boost shipments bound for ports from the highway with a makeshift swoop gang. I'm sure with your smarts, you could figure something out. You never said you had to be a swooper, but if you could deal with those Hellrunners and get them to stop pulling my brother in, maybe we have a chance at a life. And I, I think for your threat, Lizzie, she feels a tug to help. All right, kid. I'm a soft touch. You got me. Tell me, where, tell me where your brother is. Tell me how you think I can help. She gives you the directions to kind of where the the Howl Runners hide out further up in the further north up in the the waterfront. Yeah, maybe we can finally find a way to be free of this place. What do you know about these guys? Yeah, let's see. There's the Duros leader Torm. He looks tough, and I can tell he's got to have a rap sheet. And there's. Ayeti, his Zabrak girlfriend, probably the best pilot of the bunch. You won't mistake either of them for my brother, though. Uh, there's this other guy that runs with them, Brian, a human. You can tell him from Jake, though, because Brian's all swagger with no backbone. Spook's real easy. Does Lizzie recognize the names and descriptions of any of these people? So let's do uh, let's do another streetwise. Cool. Okay, and what? Is my difficulty here? So we're going to go, we're still going to do a hard check. Uh huh. So three purple. And you've got a setback. Do I have a boost? Can you justify a boost? What What from Lizzie's past would create well, I mean, this knowledge? Lizzie had dealings with some swoop gangs through Dottie and also obviously with the cops. Also, she spent a lot of time in Central Isthmus and two of the people that she just mentioned are aliens on a world that is 90% populated by humans. So just by virtue of the fact that they're not human, they'd be a little bit more notorious. Like it raises their profile a little bit if they've been yeah. here for any length of time. You can have a boost for that. All right. There's there's quite a few aliens in Central Isthmus. Yeah, but uh, Lizzie spends a lot of yeah. time here. Yeah. That's true. Um, okay. And all of that to get one advantage, and that is it. <laughs> Dice are being indecisive today. They are. Well, they just keep failing for you. Right. They're not They're not failing hard, but they're not succeeding either. So you haven't heard of them before, okay. but you might take a strain back for it because I can't think of much. I'll take that. Okay. So now I'm down to one strain. I'll be honest, Lizzie wants to help these people or this person. She's intrigued at the idea of a mechanic. She needs a mechanic. And... Um, I don't know how disposed she might be to uh, just straight up hunting down this swoop gang. But, and this may be her strongly negative emotions coloring her perception, but she's like pretty unhappy about the idea of this like criminal element preying on innocent people because she has a pretty healthy distrust for the entire establishment at this point. But they do seem to be preying off of this girl and her brother. And, uh, you know, what Lizzie thinks taking care of this swoop gang might entail might be a little more violent than this girl is thinking. But she agrees to it. Let's do it. So she says... Okay. Have Jake meet me at home when it's done. Okay. Jake's your brother? Yeah. And I never caught your name. Uh, and just call me Nat. Okay, Nat. I will... Have Jake meet you there. All right. Make sure nothing happens to him. No promises. She seems a little irked by that. I can't make promises. We're in the swamp. I'll do what I can. So Nat stands up and heads back, kind of further back into the building, into the darkness, and and disappears. Okay. I guess Lizzie, if she's not, you know, specifically familiar with the hideout, I guess she'll go kind of case the place. So it's a short swoop right away. So let's make a, a piloting planetary, just an average check with a boost dice. Okay. For for your approach to the hideout. So average would be two with a boost dice. Well, I nailed that. Three successes and an advantage. <laughs> Great. So you follow the path laid out by Nat and you're able to to bring your swoop in. You know, I, I see it's kind of you you've brought it up in altitude, kind of almost 
as high as it would go. And he landed on the roof of this old kind of business building, just a couple of stories tall. That's got a, a skylight of its own that you can kind of peek in and you got some uh, some roof access to it. A peek in, what do I see? So as, as you look over, as you look into the, the skylight, you see kind of a wide open area. You know, this would have been probably a, a cube farm of some kind or, or some kind of just, mm-hmm. you know, workstation that's clearly been cut the building's been gutted and almost as if it was placed for aesthetics there's a a table centered under the skylight and there's four people kind of around this rectangular table there's there's a duros and a zavrak woman and two uh, human men there you can see that they've got some of the the things you would expect a swoop gang to want you know they've got a couple of bikes kind of off in each kind of corner they've got some dust tarps over them and they've got some kind of projection going on on the table that shows the route that materials take from it from north down to the spaceport. And they look like they're planning their heist. Okay. Based on the descriptions, can Lizzie use process of elimination to determine which one is the brother? I think he has the same color, like mauve hair. Okay. Even though it's like buzz cut short. It's like he kind of stands out. Lizzie is going to definitely be very stealthy and keep an ear to their conversation. She's also casting about for like what's available to her, like in the exterior of this building that she can use to her advantage, like to hamper their movement or like, you know, kind of make their day a little less pleasant. Like, I was hoping maybe their bikes were outside, but they're not. They're inside. So, um... Yeah, you could see that they kind of, they got their bikes inside from some of the holes that are on this top floor, uh, you know, in the in the rubble that it is. It kind of provides a place for them to, to come in and, and and hide out. Basically, there's, there's not a lot that you see immediately. You know, there's little bits of, of rubble and and dirt around and things along those lines. But uh, do you roll perception or do you roll stealth? I mean, definitely right now to her, remaining hidden is more important than anything else. So I guess she'd roll stealth. Okay, let's roll the stealth. Because she definitely doesn't want them to know she's here just yet. Yeah. She's just kind of doing what she could to figure out if there was anything she could use to her advantage. And the answer is not immediately. So is that an average or hard? What? Do I get a boost? What's going on? You get a hard check, so three purple, except it's two purple and a red. Oh, good. I'm going to flip a token again. And then, yeah, I think you could have a boost dice, too, because you got some good directions. Okay. Because you had that advantage on the, the piloting drive. Yeah. Alrighty. So here we go. Don't screw me. Nothing. It's a straight wash. A straight wash. Nothing. Do you want me to re-roll it? No, that just means it's a failure. Failure is such a strong word. I just neglected to succeed. So you you neglected to succeed at hiding from <laughs> them, uh, but you didn't have any of the overtly negative consequences that could have been to it as well. And so I think uh, you were standing on this roof, appearing over the skylight, and you saw the group down there, all four of them. And I think that you know a glint on the table basically changed a little bit of shadow for for the group and all four of them take a, a a sudden look up and they see you at the the skylight just before you can hide from their their view there's a little bit of of shuffling noises and you can tell they're on their way to the roof you've got you've got just a moment before they arrive what do you do a glance around or on the roof. I want to be standing on something, maybe like a sturdy looking HVAC unit or something, but I want I want the high ground and I want my back to be exactly in like the setting sun. So like streams of light come off my body. She is at this point just going for a pose. Like she wants to look as heroic <laughs> and intimidating as possible. Like backlit, you know, standing there with her hands on her hips like Wonder Woman. Okay. As, yeah, as competent looking and like in as advantageous a position as she can be because she knows she can't hide from them they're coming up to the roof so she's gonna you know take some high ground and look all right so roll an athletics impressive we'll say it's an easy check thank goodness (laughs) how about a how about an agility check like a coordination check no uh we don't use coordination that's fine i would love to use that or like literally anything but (laughs) athletics Cool. I mean, how about how do we feel about survival or streetwise 
or no, vigilance those aren't even. <laughs> vigilance is my best skill and I have yet to use it this session. So, okay. Um, we want, we decided we've talked you into a, uh, a coordination, a coordination check. All right. And it's going to be Which easy. Is really just your agility anyway. Right. She's going to, so, you know. One purple. One purple. Just jump up there. There's no red this time, right? And is there a boost no. dice? I have a chance to like pose. Oh, like, how often did me. how often did Lizzie climb air conditioning units in her childhood? Probably way more often than she would like to admit, even in her professional career. But yeah, I, I get your point. Describe it for me and have a boost dice. Oh well, I give mean, us an insight into Lizzie's childhood. Yeah, so Lizzie's mother died when she was very young, and um, her father passed when she was still a child, and so she uh, she definitely spent a lot of time kind of growing up on the street with like she ran with some street kids she had like um people like a home that took care of her or whatever but they were you know orphans i mean her father was murdered by the sandman and so she kind of yeah she kind of grew up on the street she uh went into being an investigator because she got used to running around keeping her ear to the ground going places where she wasn't necessarily welcome getting to know things that maybe not everybody wanted her to know so she's a little wily in that regard and then as as a private investigator you know it sounds like such a glamorous job but really there's an awful lot of like crawling through air conditioning vents and slogging through sewers and it's it's not all roses and candy being a pi on Druckenwell. so she's she spent some time around some like rooftop ac units but you know okay you can have a boost dice awesome well done i'll take it oh crushed it Five successes and one threat, but five successes. <laughs> five successes. Okay. Okay. So basically, you you're able to clamor up this air conditioning unit. Uh, with uh, five successes, I feel like I gracefully leap. Yeah, well, you definitely try to gracefully leap your way up there. You 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 get up there, but the the climb itself that that grace is missing just a little bit. So you're really happy that nobody saw you trying to climb this air conditioning unit. Look, I'm not as young as I used to be, okay? <laughs> the years <laughs> so have not all been kind. Looking at 40. So, <laughs> um, but is the light in the right place? Because theatrics are important. For five successes, I think I think you've got the, the exact pose you were looking for. Perfect. It just was more strenuous to get up there than you thought. That's fine. It's been, it it's been a long grateful. time since I played Wonder Woman on a roof. I understand. As you get up on top of this unit and you're turning yourself just to the right angle to, to get the sun behind you and you strike that power, that Wonder Woman power pose, mm -hmm. the, the door crashes open for the rooftop access and the Duros spills out first as, as the rest of the group comes getting to a halt at the base of this air conditioning unit. So Torum the Duros looks at you first and he's like, Who the cliff are you? What do you think you're doing here? Torm, Eddie, and Brian. I should have expected you riffraff. You know, Jake, Nat really wants you home. How do you know who we are? I've been following your movements. I know what you're about. You've been following us. Tom, she knows, man. She knows. Calm down, Brian. I don't think she knows anything. There's nothing to know. You, what are you doing here? And at this point, Lizzie's going to probably need to roll deception. <laughs> what kind of a yeah. roll is that? I so you get deception. Yeah. Let's see. No, I mean, like, how difficult is it? We'll say their willpower. Two, two, two. So you've got one purple and one red. One purple and one red. And you've got a you've got a boost dice for superhero power pose here. Heroic posing. Yeah, I know. About the jobs you've been running, about how you can't maintain your own swoops, and how you've been forcing this innocent kid to do all your work for you. It's shameful, really. your money where your mouth is lizzie all right three successes and two advantage yes so what kind of advantages do you want it's like the first time tonight you get to spend advantages on a successful role yes i want them to mistake me for someone else okay. like the um oh crap what was paul's 
the Jedi vigilante. The Jedi uh, vigilante, yeah, like a like a wetlands boogeyman kind of of peace and justice, you know, like. Okay. I want them to mistake me for that. They believe you. Ha- you've got the one up on them. That you've been tracking them. They have no idea who you really are. And uh, you're clearly some kind of of. Je- uh, you're you're definitely some kind of central isthmus vigilante or waterfront vigilante. Yeah. Okay. So I want to take that hmm. a step further. And be like, look, don't make me make an example of you. Just clear out. Go on your way. And where are we supposed to go, huh? What are we supposed to do? You some kind of do-gooder? Well, I would suggest you not draw the attention of... Oh. The Templars. It's who I should have had them think I was. But I didn't think about that until just now. They kind of are. Look, I can go back and talk to my boss, or this can go away. I did my job better than you've done yours. I don't think you want me to make that report, and it's not, you know, my goal in life to to kill a small up and coming coming um, group of swoop gang wannabes. But uh, you know, one word and you guys have a problem—a big problem. I wonder if you have to roll another deception. I can do it. Yeah, I think so. Same? Yeah. Ugh, that's dicier. One success and two advantage, but that's all I got. One success and two advantage? Mm-hmm. Okay. We don't want any trouble with Templars. Why just trying to make a living, you know? Well, this ain't the way. Maybe she's right, Tom. This ain't worth losing our lives over. Nope. Surely we could find something else. And that's what you're gambling with. So just, look, take it from me, cut it out, do something else. Or find a different territory to work in. You know what you're doing. You know where you're at. So they kind of hang their heads in, in shame now that you've scolded them. Yes. You've made it not worth it for them to kind of to carry on. But I, I have one more dark side token that I'm flipping. There's the sound of swoop bikes on the horizon. You get this sense, this noise, the, the low rumble, a handful of swoop bikes pull up outside the, the hideout. So you, you guys are on the the roof. Right. Eddie runs over to the, the side and looks over the edge. Criff, it's the Templars. What the cark, lady? I thought you said we'd be cool. Somebody must have ratted me out. And then Lizzie is going to try to grab Jake and jump on her bike and just tear off in the opposite direction. Okay. Because Lizzie does not want to have any re- interaction with the Templars because obviously... She's not a member of their gang. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> They're going to figure that out real quickly. And and she wants Jake out of here. And she really doesn't care what happens to anybody else in this situation. Uh-huh. So uh, let's make a, a brawl roll. Brawl? Yeah, because you're grabbing Jake. He's not He's not looking to, to go with you willingly. So it's going to be your brawn. I see it. I'm just unhappy about it. Well, um, you have three tokens. Oh, well, I'm going to use one of those. Okay, so you can change out a green for a yellow. Yes. As she grabs him, she's going to say something that hopefully makes him a little more compliant. Come on, Nat is really worried about you. We got to get out of here. I, I told her I I told her I would bring you home. Okay, you can have a boost dice for that. All right, a boost dice. And then what am I rolling against? Because that is not enough dice. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a red and a purple. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, this is not going to work. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness. Two successes and a threat. Okay. Thank you, upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> so you're able to kind of pull Jake kind of unwillingly to the, the back of your, your swoop as you get on and you start the engine up and uh and begin to take off. And you, you hear him kind of yelling in your ears, like, what about the what about everybody else? You can hear Eddie they're pulling up fast, guys. What are we gonna do? Downstairs. We're sitting dong cats out here. You start up your your bike. Hey, where are you two going? Brian, come on, leave them. We gotta go. As you're racing off into the sunset, there's a uh, a swoop that pulls in behind you. It's got one of the Templars in it. They're giving chase to you. Oh, great. There's one on our tail. Yup, got that. I don't remember all the rules for a chase. 
but we're doing piloting planetary. Planetary, and then if I wanted to shoot him. Yeah, let's roll initiative. That's what we need to do. Melee. I mean, we don't have to do that. I want to be clear. I think we do. <laughs> All right. Cool. Because do you shoot him? Does he shoot you? Right. It's all, the answer. all the answers are in the dice. Right. So I don't even remember how to roll initiative here. Uh, so you're going to pick cooler vigilance. Oh, that's right. And then roll a simple check. So you just roll the dice that are in that pool. It is definitely vigilance is what we're doing here. And don't I get bonuses with vigilance? What, what did we decide my thing gives me? You have a bonus when you do, like, you have to uncanny all, reactions. Yeah, to so, all yeah. vigilance checks. Okay. Yeah. So is that on top of, yeah, that's, okay. That's reflected in what I've got here. So, and the, what do I roll against, or is that not how this works? It's a, so initiative is just a simple roll, just meaning that you don't roll any difficulty up. dice. All right, cool. And then I roll for the, the pilot over here. Cool. I get one success and four advantage on my vigilance check. Okay. All right, you go first. Okay. Lizzie silently curses the fact that Dottie's not here. So... When Jake yells in her ear, What about everybody else? I hear you're a decent mechanic. How good are you at driving these things? Uh, I, I, I just, I build them. I don't fly them. Aren't you flying this thing? Ever used a blaster? I use a hydro spanner. Wow, that's not the same thing. Okay. So yeah, I guess Lizzie is going to try to pilot this thing while shooting at someone. <laughs> okay. So first, she's just going to try to take evasive maneuvers get away from them as quickly as possible. We're going to make a ranged light attack, right? Mm-hmm. And that's going to probably not involve boost die. No, it will involve setback die. Uh, of course it will. And what else will it involve? <laughs> <laughs> we'll say it's, uh, he, he, he's pretty close behind you. Oh, so great. It's a, so he's in short range, meaning it's one purple. Okay. Worst things have happened recently. Yeah. All right, let's try it. Oh! Two successes. All right. She's a sharpshooter today. Lizzie, like, you know, reaches back over her shoulder and Jake's looks back and tries to fire over her shoulder at this pursuing swoop gang member. So you hit him, but he doesn't he doesn't go down. It's kind of a glancing blow and kind of off the shoulder of his his thick jacket. Still better than I expected. Then you take your evasive maneuvers. Yes. Right? And I'm, I'm playing these rules by memory. I'm not looking them up. So all uh, the folks at, at home listening to this being like, that's not how this works. Well, <laughs> it is now. It is now. Oh, I don't like that sound. He doesn't like the result. He crashes his bike. Absolutely. He does. Oh. So he rolled a despair. Oh, that's awesome. So he pulls out his, his blaster after getting hit and takes a, a shot at you as you're evading. And he fires a couple of rapid fire blasts. They hit the back of your, your bike and smoke sputters out of it. You're losing control. But he wasn't paying attention to the turn that he needed to make. And one of the low hanging because of the flooded street, you know, retail signs or billboards uh, comes out of nowhere and, and takes him completely out. Ooh, There's that's a little explosion awesome. behind you guys as you, you rush down this marshy alleyway. But now you have you have to get control back over the bike. Uh, so you're greening out of control. So you need a piloting planetary check. Okay. I really want him to have run into like a Wonder Woman sign. It's just a cutout of like the exact same pose that you had on yes. top of the... Yeah. Yep, that happened. All right. Um, and I'm making a piloting planetary check, right? You are making a hard with a setback piloting planetary check not to crash your swoop. Which that's is now on fire. Three purple, three purple and, a, and black. a black. Not to crash my swoop that is now on fire. You know what? I'm going to flip a token. Okay. I was just thinking I was going to flip one too. So, oh, great. So now you have a, you take out a, a purple for a red and a green for a yellow. We're going high stakes here. We are. Purple for red, green for yellow. All right, let's roll them. Does you no good. Two successes. Two successes. That's and great. That's... You get your swoop under control, and uh, a Jake kind of spins around. You can feel him messing around with the back of the, the swoop, and, and everything kind of clicks back into place, and you're able to kind of hit the accelerator. You're pretty low now to the, the marsh land that now makes up the street in between these buildings, and it, you know, the repulsor pushes it to the sides as the, the swoop disappears. 
into the over the horizon. You've done it. You've yes. you've done every challenge I had for you. Tonight. Yes. So hey, you're a pretty good mechanic. Ever thought about uh doing some legitimate work? Thanks for joining us in the Dicey Cantina. Enjoying the show? Consider giving us a five-star review on iTunes or find more at DiceyCantina.com. Your support truly helps the show grow. This week's episode features music by Mark Eberhardt. Mark can be found on Twitter at Mark C. Eberhardt and as the GM and host of The Other Place podcast. The Other Place is a phenomenal actual play podcast in the Genesis system in a custom setting of their own design. And we want to say a special thanks to the folks over at the Starbirds podcast for their assistance in editing this story arc. Be sure and check out their promo at the end of the show. That's all for now, so pull up a stool and we'll see you here next week in the Dicey Cantina. Do you enjoy Star Wars? RPGs, and actual play podcasts? Then you'll love the Starbirds. Here are a few clips from their upcoming season set in Hut Space. Ever wondered what a pickle tastes like in space? Take a matcha so. pickle, throw it to the side, and then put on his... Just put on the helmet and wait. <laughs> and he's just like eagerly like sitting out right by the door you looking just like out. sealed your head in a container where you're <laughs> munching down on a pickle. That's the, the, the gases you're causing. It's a fear factor game. Yeah. <laughs> You get to eat all these pickles inside this jar. Uh, ever left your calm link on while you're in the refresher? You're, talking you're alone talking. in the refresher, kid. Kid, please. You're like, it's so stressed out. It just holds like down the button. He's singing in the shower and stuff. And they're like, oh my God, not again. Like, oh, I'm going to make a sandwich. Oh, I like these. Oh, mayonnaise on a sandwich. <laughs> He just narrates his That's life. Kid. <laughs> Peanut butter for the kid. <laughs> I thought he's in the bathroom. Ah. <sighs> Ever been stranded on a ship with people you can barely stand? Okay, I'm about to J.K. Simmons <laughs> from Whiplash. Start clapping at my if head. You cannot, if you cannot get this. Meanwhile, Gat is just like sweating I will profusely throw a like the kid. At your head.